Um, we have a regular meeting starting at 7.30. Also in concurrence with the regular meeting will be a special meeting which refers to an item 5-1 as new business. So I call the meeting to order. Our invocation is Bishop John Smith. Please rise and stay for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we thank you for this moment, this opportunity that you have given us another time to come together. Father, we thank you, God, for in these trying times that you are our comfort, you are our help. Father, we pray, God, that we will not allow fear uh, to overtake us, but we will trust in you that you will lead us and guide us. We ask you to look upon this city, look upon this council. We ask a special prayer, Lord, for our mayor and his wife as she battles uh, with her illness. Father, we pray that you cover them as long as, as well as cover them the entire city in this body. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Call to uh, roll call, please. Council Member Lyons? Here. Council Member Scaldi? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Plord? Present. Mayor Neal? Thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, closed session report? Nothing to report, Council. No closed session okay. report. Uh, agenda approval, additions, and or deletions? We have none. So public comment. Oh, by the way, on the uh, special meeting agenda, there's a note on the top that says that uh, public health or public or health officials recommend against large gatherings and anyone attending does so at their own risk. I hope that we stay healthy for a long time. But let that be known. So we uh, have a public comment. This time uh, is set as, uh, reserved for members of the audience to address the city council on items of interest that is not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each, and it is requested that no comments be made during this, this period on items on the agenda. The council is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to addressing the council, any handouts to council will be provided to the city clerk to distribute to the council and appropriate staff. Does anybody wish to address the council? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, ceremonies and presentation section one, we have none. Uh, Department City Manager Report Section 2, 2-1. So Department starting tonight City is Manager's report. Judy Howell. Good evening, Council members. Just wanted to report that we've been pretty busy in the Community Development Department. Uh, we did um, approved the Dutch Brothers project. We've been waiting on the lot line adjustment, so that was just approved today. So hopefully they will get moving pretty quickly on that. So that one's ready to go. We uh, did take a project to Planning Commission on March 9th, and that was for the master storage expansion. So master storage is out in the industrial park. They're going to expand about double in size. Uh, that one's been approved. They're also going through a lot line adjustment so that the two parcels that they have right now will be combined into one parcel. Uh, we received an application from Lennar. They are proposing to build a subdivision on the west side, just east of West Hills College. That's a fairly large project on about 45 acres. Uh, in three phases, they plan to build about 362 homes. And then there's another large project, and you may recall, those of you that were here, a gentleman came here and talked about a large project to be annexed in on the north side of Lemoore. That one's called Lacey Ranch. And we finally received the application on that one. Uh, 
And so that one is about 155 acres. It's gonna be phased over several years as the market bears. And we'll have, um, what did I write? I wrote 534 lots. No. That's the one on the north. 550 homes. That's the one on that northeast. Northeast of Lamore and Green, um, Glendale. Okay. Will by we the, have to annex that? Yes. They haven't annexed it yet. It'll be, we received the applications though now. So now we'll start processing it. It will take a long time before the project actually comes to you for approval because it, um, they're going through an um, environmental impact review on that. So that whole document, it will probably take a year to get through all of the required documents and everything before you'll actually see the project. But we'll try to get through it all as quickly as possible. They're just starting on that EIR report, so we don't have it yet. But so it'll take time to get that to you. Oh, and then we do have That'll have, have to go to LAFCO first? It will come here first. It'll go to Planning Commission, and then it will come to Council and council will make a recommendation to have it annexed in, and then it goes to LAFCO. And then we do have an application for a conditional use permit for a beer and wine bar at the location, which is currently the Blue Door Massage. So that one will go to planning commission. So a lot going on, and I was happy to report it. Thank you, Judy. So I was just going to do some updates on coronavirus, but I'll wait till we get to the new business item and the special meeting to address those. So that's it. Consent calendar. Section three items considered routine in nature are placed on the consent calendar. They are all considered and voted upon in one vote as one item, unless the council member or member of the public request individual consideration. 3-1, approval minutes, regular meeting, March 3, 2020. 3-2, approval minutes, special meeting, March 9, 2020. 3-3, approval, second reading of ordinance, 2020-02, approval of First Amendment to the disposition and development agreement between the City of Lemoore and KKAL LP, and addendum to initial or initial study mitigation negative declaration. 3-4, approval resolution 2020-06 regarding public transit needs within the city of Lemoore and authorizing the filing of a claim for Transportation Development Act funds. 3-5, approval agreement for bank services with Wells Fargo. Does any council member wish to pull at any item? No. Any member of the public wish to pull any item? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Well, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Motion by Council Member Scaldi, second by Council Member Lyons. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Council Member Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passes. Public hearing section four. 4-1, public hearing. First reading, ordinance 2020-03, amendment amending and restating section 10 to title seven, chapter seven, article one, or article A of the Lamore Municipal Code, water services rate and charges relating to water services rates, charges, delinquent bills and discontinuance of service. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. So the municipal ordinance in, um, includes language regarding our billing services for all of our utilities. And several weeks ago, Council adopted a policy related to um, a new Senate bill um, requiring that local municipalities provide certain options to um, in individuals within the community that fall below the 200% threshold of the poverty line. This water ordinance revision is just to basically merge those two documents and note all the policy changes, but with the understanding that it does not affect all citizens, it would only affect those that fall below the 200% threshold. So this is just clean up language to make us consistent with the new state law. Any 
discussion on that. Hmm. The, uh, this brings us into conformance with the state law, and it may limit us from recovering the actual cost, but that's stated by the, the state law's limitations on what we can, can collect. That's correct. So uh, we're going to adopt the ordinance. Any, any comment from the council? Anybody from the city council wish to address um, this? Mayor Pro Tem, if you could open the public hearing. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. We are going to open the public hearing. Anybody wish to address the council concerning this item? Seeing none, close the public hearing and waiting a motion. Uh, I'd like um, to make a motion to uh, to approve 4-1 public hearing on that ordinance. And just for clarification for the record, it would be a motion to introduce and waive the first reading of the ordinance. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> second. A motion from Council Member Scaldi, a second from Council Member Lyons. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Okay, so Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Council Member Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Council. 4 2 public hearing, resolution 2020 07, approving refuse rates, or refuse rate increases and adjustments effective on April 1st, 2020, April 1, 2021, April 1, 2022. April 1, 2023, and April 1, 2024. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I want to turn this portion of the meeting over to our uh, consultant, Dan Bergman of IS Ace uh, Services. He has a brief presentation and will answer any questions that we ask. Thank you, Frank. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. It's good to be back. Um, I'm going to have a short presentation tonight, focusing mainly on process that we've been through extensively. <clears throat> to the extent you'd like to talk in detail about the content of the study, we can go there too. Um, as I'm going through process, you'll, I'll be relating to the content part of it. All of that's to say my presentation is going to be fairly short. I also want to acknowledge that Nicole Pena is here from KWRA and who helps her. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm also noticing that most of our collection crew is here to um, support the department, which is great. So um, the steps taken so far, <clears throat> and I'm going to take you through a series of steps that started last summer. Extensive analysis and coordination with staff through last summer, leading up to an initial city council study set session that we did on September 3rd. And that was the first time I was able to introduce to you the work that had been done and um, preliminary results of the study. <clears throat> we followed with customer meetings with the apartment managers at the large apartment complexes and then customer survey activities, which I've talked to council about in the past. We used survey monkeys, over 600 customers responded. The responses were generally favorable. People are generally satisfied with the service and um, and, and so that, that was good. Following October, we had a community meeting on October 29th, which was just prior to coming back to you, asking for approval to release, to issue the rate increase notices, which was given. The first rate increase notice was received by customers um, by December 5th. The intent was that we were going to come back in, um, in January, later January, for a rate hearing. Instead of doing that, we issued a second rate notice. Staff issued a second rate notice on February 5th, correcting some very minor errors in that initial notice. There were some rates that were missing in some of the special fee areas, and a, uh, typos were corrected associated with the six-yard bins for commercial customers. So there was nothing there having to do with residential customers and nothing really affecting very many customers, but we wanted to get it right. 
So we issued a second notice, um, which gave us 45 days up to tonight. Two weeks ago, there was a second community meeting, which um, I attended and spoke at with staff to, again, do the best job possible, letting the community know what's going on and hearing questions and concerns. Um, and now we are, oops, went too far, <clears throat> here tonight at the rate hearing, asking for your approval of the rates. Um, and as is, uh, you've already read in the resolution, are effective for April 1st. So just very briefly, the rate study itself, <clears throat> the initial step of the rate study is to look very carefully at the expense and revenue balance. So in that, um, we looked at previous audited years, the current year budget, and then projected forward what the needs were. That's on page 12 of the study, that table. We have introduced commercial and recycle, commercial recycle and organic rates, which the city has not had previously. All of the costs for those services were covered in the commercial rates. So now there are rate structures, not just for landfill, but also for recycle and organics for commercial customers. And then finally, key component to the rate study work is the cost of service analysis. So especially for commercial customers, the, in the work that I did, the costs are allocated more fairly between the different size bins based on the size of the bins and the, and the pickup schedule. The result of the work is in the first year, a 30% overall increase in revenue. <clears throat> that 30% increase in revenue carried straight to residential customers, where a typical residential rate will go up 30%. For commercial customers, it's all over the board based on the true up of the rate structure. The initial 30% increase is followed by consecutive 3% increases, which are mainly to follow inflation. However, depending on how the enterprise fund is doing going forward, if it's doing better, you have the option based on staff's recommendation to pass on any one of those 3% increases. But the way the enterprise is modeled, you will need those consecutive 3% increases. <clears throat> the rate study co covers increased operating cost and also the cost of truck replacement, which the city is behind on. And the, the number in the table for trucks is around 300,000 a year. <clears throat> and basically the city needs to buy a truck a year for trucks that um, generally they, would, they say they last seven years, so you can get 10 out of them. And that's how we modeled it, making the trucks last 10 years. Also, the um, revenue increase continues service as it is, biweekly service for green and blue containers. That's included in the base cost. So I just wanted to show you again the comparison chart where you are <clears throat> at $23. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, moving upward to $29.90 for a typical residential customer. And then finally, the impact of this increase to a typical residential bill. So you can see we're looking at 2020 and you can see the bump upward for refuse and the larger increase that has already happened is the increase for water. But this is relevant because it's what a customer sees. They don't see just one charge, they see all three. So with that, a lot of ground has been covered with you in previous meetings, with the public over the past many months. If you'd like, Council, I can go into more detail or I can stop here, depending on questions. I just have a comment. I want to thank you for all the uh, the hard work and all the, you know, countless hours. I don't, I don't know how many hours you put into this, but as a general comment, uh, this is an enterprise fund and it it has to pay for itself. The, it doesn't come out of the uh, general fund, correct? That's exactly right. 
in my abbreviated presentation, I omitted that opening important point. The enterprise funds, whether it's refuse or sewer or water, they are independent businesses operating within your city. They have to be self-funded. So the this is not a money maker for the city to augment that three dollars or six dollars, you know, is not going to go into the general fund. It's going directly to the cost of services. That is exactly correct. That was my comment. Okay. Could could you go back to your opening picture for this whole thing? I, I know most people did see this, but to me, <laughs> uh I see a friend driving a piece of equipment that is well taken care of down Belinda. I know that's Belinda because I've lived in this town my entire life. And I think a picture says a thousand words. Yeah, the driver's sitting back there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I made them, when we went out to take that picture, <clears throat> I made him make a U-turn because the sun was shining on the wrong side of the truck. So we're really <laughs> proud of that picture. We got the sun on the right side of the that, truck. That is Belinda though, isn't it? It looks like it. I don't know, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Dan. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Let's open a public comment. Um, actually, if you could open the public hearing. Public and, hearing. Yes, and then after you open the public hearing, the clerk needs to open any bid protests and count them and report out. All right. I'm going to open up the public hearing, ask the clerk to um, – I have not received any at this moment. Okay. Any members of the public wish to address the council during this public hearing? Please, please come up and uh, state your name and and uh, for the record and make your comment. Good evening. Uh, my name is Melvin Roman. I've been a resident of Lemoore since 2004. Um, I love this town, and a lot of people always ask me why you live on Lemoore. I say, why not? Everywhere you go, there's parking, no traffic. There's nothing not to like about it. But what I really don't like, it's the uh, the 30% increase about their refuse rates. If the numbers were clear and they two and two equal to four, I wouldn't have a problem with the numbers adding up, but they don't add up. On our meeting two weeks ago with the uh, with Mr. Olson here and Mr. Lyons was there as well. There's a $500,000 discrepancy and they don't have an answer where that money's going. Uh, I don't know if you guys have this sheet in front of you that was given to us at that meeting. This one? Kind of, no, it looks a little different. Is that the same one that, the one you gave me that you gave them? No, that's the So, Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members, what he's speaking out is when we showed the, the rate study, there was a line item that had, I want to say, 600 and some thousand dollars on it. And when I saw that, it didn't look right to me because I thought that was our cost allocation. And I knew the cost allocation was between 350 and four, not six. What I didn't know is that number had the, um, not workers comp, but the, the liability insurance included in it. So that number is an accurate number and we can tie it back. Okay, so now that we have a response for that, uh, that is a $170,000 increase over fiscal year 2019. And then there's another $226,000 for two new employees. If you split that by half, that's $113,000 a year, each one of those drivers. You know, does, that does not, when Mr. Olson explained, he said that we have to pay him health insurance and we have to pay him everything else. But that that's, Okay, they, those guys are all entitled to that. And I love our driver. I know one of them is, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, but to hire two new drivers at $113,000 a year don't make sense. So when I asked Mr. Olson how the numbers come up so high, he said, well, we gotta, we gotta pay management for those two new employees as well. So we're not just hiring two new drivers, we are giving a raise to some people in the city as well to supervise those two new drivers. 
uh, the other other increase in uh, in here is the um, another fifty thousand dollars on other fleet services. So when I added them all up and the people that were at the meeting the other day, it, it was significantly almost near half a million dollars discrepancy that the numbers just don't add up. And we as citizens of Lemoore, we deserve an explanation where all these numbers are going if we're just hiring two new drivers. So again, if I could address council on that, that number he's talking about, that isn't just the increase for two people. That's liability, PERS unfunded liability. It's not just the two employees. They're part of that number, but not the totality of that number. Does that include garbage truck maintenance, replacement? So, so I was on? going back to the first one when he said that we're paying two new people 113,000 a year. That's not accurate. They're not being paid 113, but that number he's referring to in the study has PERS unfunded liability. It's got workers comp insurance. It's got what we pay the, it's got all the bennies for the employee plus the other stuff we cover as a city. And there is the overhead because we do all the utility billing. Utility billing gets that transfer back in to cover the cost of that service. So that's all built into that 600. The other number he's talking on fleet, I'm not sure what he's talking about. Uh, salaries and benefits. Salaries and benefits. There's a $226,000 increase over last year. And then uh, you just mentioned that the liability insurance was part of the general administration uh, number. So you're mixing the numbers together. So their base salaries and their salaries and benefits. Their base salaries. So we talked about base, base. salary last time. And what you're said. talking about is the 600,000. That is workers comp, unfunded liability, PERS, pensions, and what else is in that, Michelle? Okay, so. Or I'm sorry, Amanda. Amanda knows. So in the $600,000 figure, not the salaries and benefits, that's cost allocation and that's risk management. That's what's built into that two portions. And you're right, there is an increase over the two years, and that's because risk management wasn't previously budgeted in the year before. So the increase that you're seeing year over year is the risk management portion of that. Salaries and benefits includes uh, your two new workers, but it also includes the PERS unfunded liability and all of the just general increases to all the employees as well as their regular raises. So it's not just for the two additions, it's for the current staff as well for their increases. Okay, so how come when we go over the next year, if we go to fiscal year 2021, there are increases that happens every year, it's only a $50,000 difference because we're not adding bodies, I believe, in that year. So the bases are there. It's just the increase for health and for unfunded life. Okay, so if I give you those $50,000 back and we go back to fiscal year 2020, 2020 that still leave you with two new employees for $175,000, right? Not necessarily. We have the breakdown. You just, you just said that the 226 is because we, are, we need the extra to pay the raises for the employees that we already have. So when we look at 2021, the difference on that extra for the races is $50,000. I go back to 2020, I took this $50,000 out. So it still leaves me, this, it still leaves you with an increase of $176,000 for 2020 for those two new employees. If Mr. Olson shared the other day, he said that those two new employees will start at $15 an hour. So if we paid him $15 an hour times 28 is working hours in a year, 15 times 28, that's 30, to thirty-three thousand dollars a year, so give it or take, we put another hundred percent on top of that for the salary, sixty-six thousand dollars for each one of those employees, including benefits and everything else. Sixty-six times two is one hundred and twenty. Where's the other fifty thousand dollars going? We're going to uh, limit the conversation to three minutes, and uh, no problem. We're going to uh, try to address those questions at the end of the public portion of the. Uh, of the public hearing. Okay. No so uh, if we, if I just you want could, you guys to be aware that there's discrepancies that are not being addressed in the rest of the. One, once again, it, it's not a money maker. We're just trying to break even. If we go broke, then nobody gets service uh, in the city. So we have to break at least even. And the numbers uh, hopefully will be brought out uh, by the person that crunched them and, and see if we can get a good answer for you. How about the negotiations right now going private with the refuse and these guys being out of a job? Um, Mayor Pro Tem, that is not the subject of this discussion right, that, right now. That's a different item. 
Uh, anyone else would like to come? please step forward and state your name for the record? <clears throat> Thank you for your comment, by the way. Hi, I'm Mike Barrington. I live just a little ways across from the, the maintenance yard. Yeah, I, I just got to a couple of concerns. Uh, I'm not here to create any problems. Uh, first, uh, a 30% jump in anything is a big pill to swallow. If there was any way, particularly now that the coronavirus issue has come up, if maybe we could do this increase in like say two phases, would probably save a whole lot of grief for a lot of people. And the second thing I wanted to say is, yes, we need new trucks. I heard that we're getting more housing here. That's a big jump, that's a big revenue. You got to service all them people. So, I mean, obviously at some point we're going to have to do this now or, or later. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'm 21 year retired military. I have a fixed income. Generally since 2006, the raises every year for cost of living has been anywhere from 1.5 to 3%. I start getting a little concerned when the uh, wallet starts uh, kind of buzzing with uh, a little more dust than I'm used to. The, um, uh, losing my train of thought here, sorry. Uh, with that being said, the overall maintenance of all the equipment I learned in the military, if you have a really good preventive maintenance program, you could practically almost double the lifespan of these trucks. And uh, I know that's maybe a big reach, but that's a goal. So um, with that being said, good good preventive maintenance. And then, you know, 3% uh, a year after that, I don't really have a problem with that. But that initial kick in the pants, that's gonna be a that's gonna be an attention getter. And uh, I I like this town. I've been here since right after the big earthquake in 89. So and I, I really have a, a good feel for this town. And I don't want to see people get bitter and leave. So with that being said, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your comment and thank you for your service. Anyone else? Okay, I'll close. So before you close the public hearing, Mayor Pro Tem, we need to announce that once public testimony is closed, ballots will no longer be accepted. This is the last opportunity to submit any ballots. What she said. <laughs> okay. Now you can close. Close the public hearing. Okay, let's talk numbers. Uh, we have an expert. The question was, is there money's going elsewhere that uh, that he was saying uh, he couldn't find an explanation for no i sir. think it was like a hundred thousand uh, something like that well let me be very concise first of all with regard to the 30 percent increase yes it is substantial the city of lamore has not had a refuse rate increase since 2008 that was 12 years ago it would have been better to do it sooner and more gradually. But the fact is that during all that time, your residents have had the benefit of rates that are lower than they should have been. So it's unfortunate that it's 30%, but that's where we are after 12 years. <clears throat> With regard to general administration, um, this is on page 12, by the way, of your rate study, if you didn't find that. There is a very substantial increase, he is correct. And I just want to reiter reiterate what Amanda said. You see this substantial increase between fiscal 19 and fiscal 20. Fiscal 19 for general administration is $433,000. In fiscal 20, it jumps to $609,083. It's huge. And the reason for that is risk management costs had not previously been assigned to the refuse enterprise. The general fund was covering it. And so the city has done really a better job in assigning costs where they need to go. So the refuse enterprise hadn't seen this before and bam, there it is. So it's a good observation. It's a large increase and it's legitimate. 
With regard to personnel, if you turn to page 18 of your rate study, which, is, which are the tables in the back, in the lower left-hand corner of that page, you can see the um, schedule for, sa for salary and benefit for each of the 14 employees. And it adds up to the planning year number for the rate study. In this case, it's $1.2 million. So the fact is, as, as I expressed at the community meeting, the numbers are high, they look high, because of all the different cost components that are being covered for employees, most significantly with regard to overhead is the PERS unfunded liability component. Um, so you look at numbers per employee, they're $84,000 a year. And that is the correct number. When you add up all the components of cost for the employees, it's $84,000. For, and that's for drivers, for the drivers. So the number's correct. And those are the, my three responses. Okay. Um, one of the questions was, uh, could we delay this this action? Well, it's going to have to happen anyways. Does it have to happen on April the 1st? That's another question. And, uh, you know, uh, do people have uh, an adequate amount of time to uh, prepare themselves for the increase? Uh, that's something the council has to consider. If, it, uh, if we delay the cost... Yeah, um, uh, I understand that 30% is a pretty substantial amount of money for, for anybody. It is. It's for me. It's for my next door neighbor, the person across town, whatever it might be. Um, and in, especially in these uncertain times with COVID-19, all that wonderful stuff, you know, people not making the money that, that they might made yesterday, next week, or we can make that rate effective next month. Um, have people been aware of it? Absolutely. This has been out since last year, September-ish, um, that they were aware it's coming. Like I said, with um, everything that's happening and see of, of what's going to come in the next week, day, month, um, I, I would say that that we can, if if we can pass it, that we we wait and uh, raise the rates. July 1 instead of April 1 to push it back until we find out the uncertainty and even then find out what's going on and uh, and go from there. Council Member Lyons. I agree. I agree with you, Chris. I mean, Nathan, we can push it. Me too. So we had an opportunity for public comment already, so there's no need to have a, another public comment. No, you've closed the public hearing. And uh, motion then. Okay, I'll motion to accept 4-2 and... Uh, Since there was new items brought up after the public hearing was ordered, I think it might be appropriate that we do have a chance to make a comment. That would be up to council if you want to reopen the public hearing. I'm in favor. I'm fine with it. All right. We'll reopen the public hearing. Tom Reed, 1064 Avenue really more. If you delay the uh, time of the increase, uh, how is that going to affect the general fund? Is there a substantial amount of uh yeah they're going to fluctuate a little bit because they're fluid but they're about a two hundred and eighty thousand dollar reserve in the refuse fund um a few month delay isn't going to should it'll be okay it just won't we won't be able to build our reserves as soon as we put on the plan just back those numbers up however many months you go in the short term we'll continue to chew into that a little bit every month until we pass the rate increase. Okay, and also, uh, if you delay from 30% to 20%, you're gonna have to add that on to future years. And that might be a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? No. 
Public hearing is still open. I, I just want to be clear. I wasn't against the uh, increase, but maybe two tier it this year, 15% and 15%. Uh, obviously the months uh, based on whatever's favorable. Any other, anyone else wish to address the council? And uh, any discussion on uh, hearing? No. no. Okay, I'll entertain a motion then. Okay, I have a motion to accept for dash two, the resolution 2020-07, but for the increase not to happen until July 1st, is that what we said? July 1? July 1. All right, motion, second? I'd like to second that. Any discussion on the motion? Yes, council members, so just, that's fine. Um, you have the right now that if this passes, you can set those rate increases as needed. So depending on how things are with coronavirus or what's going on or not going on, um, you could always request that we hold off or you could start it sooner. That is up to your discretion at this point. So okay. thank you for the delay. I'm sure that's going to help a few people out. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? I will close that discussion and we'll have a motion uh, from Councilmember Lyons. Aye. And Councilmember Scaldi. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passes. Next items. New business section five. Five dash one, the report and recommendation uh, coronavirus implementation and impact city strategies and concerns. By the way, uh, I want to thank all the members of the refuse <coughs> department that uh, do their work very well for the city on a daily basis. Thank you. Didn't want to let you leave the room without hearing that. Okay, so. Okay. We have a staff report from the city manager. Yeah, so good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and council members. Um, so everybody's aware of the COVID-19 that's going around and there's been a state of emergency declared by the state. Kings County this morning declared Kings County in a state of emergency. Um, and that's not to get people to panic. It's just to trigger some, the state does it to trigger the work with the feds and free up some, some funding opportunities, the county and uh, can do it to associate risk factors to work with the state and get get other um, services to help out get through this virus. The city can declare a state of emergency and I'm probably gonna go there tonight and ask for that, for you to declare that. And it's not that we have a big issue at the current time, but as you see the mandates coming down from uh, the president and the governor about meeting places and all the other things that come down here in a state of emergency does is help us best maximize our staff and run the city day to day the most efficient way we can with complying with what or may not come down the pipe. Um, currently with our MOUs, we have very prescribed language in there, like to change somebody's schedule, it's a 30 day notice, things like that. So in order for the city to get compliant with mandates that may come, I would have to declare a state of emergency to be able to pull the trigger. And then it would require to hold a special special session with council within seven days to ratify that action. So we're to date, what we've done is we have, we've shut down the rec center over at the CMC. So it's not, the track's not open. The uh, youth um, indoor soccer has been suspended. Um, until we are postponed until we happen. But basically the rec center has been closed down until further notice. We didn't put a date on it. We're just kind of watching it day by day, week by week. Um, some of the adult, the adult classes we have over there are still in session, but they're canceling slowly but surely upon the uh, advice of the person running that. So, so for the most part now we've shut down, um, the CMC, we've limited, we're not running functions for over 250. We do have some rentals that we're 
previously rented out, we have assigned um, waiver of liability. So basically anybody renting a facility um, to continue on with some of the rentals. Again, we're watching that day in and day out. So really, um, if we, if you allow, or if you approve a state of emergency for the city of Lemoore, it's really all about the flexibility with how we handle any directives that come down. Um, it's not to panic. I mean, the best, the best bet is still wash your hands, stay home, use common sense, and we can keep this thing at bay. Um, but the washing of the hands is, is critical and don't come to work if you're sick. And we've already instituted um, a couple different levels of somebody sick, how we deal with it and when you go home, when you go to a doctor, when you return to work. So those protocols have been put out. And then earlier today, we put out a video from the CDC, a little nine minute educational video that's on the City of Lamar Facebook page about what what COVID-19 is, how it, things like that. So it's a quick little video you can watch. We put it out there as a public service. Um, and at this point, I'll turn it over to Mary. Okay, so just adding a few additional comments. Um, I passed out, and there's um, copies available for the public as well with the city clerk. I passed out a resolution um, along with the city manager's request that their um, city declare a state of emergency for the reasons that Nathan has described. Um, so that's before you, and under this agenda description, it's broad enough to where you can go ahead and adopt that resolution. Um, also, just so that you're aware, um, I know you gave the admonishment to the public about being in a, a room full of people and that they do so at their own risk. The governor has since relaxed the Brown Act requirements for government to protect government. So um, any and all council members can actually call into meetings now. They don't have to be open to the public from where you're calling in at, and it doesn't even need to be posted on the agenda that you'll be calling in, and that's to protect the government function. Um, what is required if that occurs is a space for the public to be able to come and listen and still be able to comment, whether that be through phone, um, just so we're limiting the amount of people in a room. Does, uh, does this uh, state of emergency proclamation or resolution, does that uh, uh, make us... Uh, make it a little bit easier for the city to be uh, considered for grant money if it comes up in the future? It, it doesn't hurt the city's chances of getting that. Um, primarily what it does is it allows you to go ahead and work with other local um, governments, state government and federal government in exchange for the, you know, if you need extra services in your city. And the county has done this. The county Correct. did it this morning at the board okay. of supervisors meeting. Okay, any comments from the council? Any comments from the public on this agenda item? Okay, we have no, a have member one. standing up. Comrade 1065, Lee Moore. You know, for comments to made, they'll probably be made by me. Uh, in regards to the uh, public attending council meetings and having proper amount of space, we have a building right next door. There's plenty of space here thank you i'm just going to quickly add you got a big kmart over there that's empty if you need bed space <laughs> <laughs> then obviously you know there might be an opportunity to come up with deep just down the road with helping them out that might actually fill a little money in your space too okay that uh, looks like the end of the public comment um, discussion uh, or a motion from council? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to pass resolution number 2020-08. Uh, council member Scaldi, and need a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, council member Scaldi? Aye. Council Member Lyons? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passes. Okay. Brief City Council Reports and Requests, Section 6. City Council Reports and Requests. Council Member Lyons. Yeah, my uh, 
my my one commission that I normally go to has been canceled, and uh, I like to thank the refuse guys for being here. And oh wait, hold on, I wrote down their names real quick. Mr. Uh, Mike Barrington, thank you for your comments, sir. And uh, Melvin uh, Roman, I, he I think he's gone. Yeah, he but uh, I'd like to thank the city for their continued effort. And someone keeps stealing my coffee mugs. Both my Lamore Police Department coffee mugs got stolen again. Not one this time, but two. I'm going to find this guy. Or girl. Or girl and give him a piece of my mind. That's it. I'm done. All right. Council Member Scaldi. Um, like it's been said, uh, make sure you wash your hands. Try and get over this. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the firemen who went to Porterville for the memorial for the two fallen firefighters. Um, there was a contingency of approximately six gentlemen who went on uh, February 28th to the memorial over in Porterville all afternoon, morning and afternoon. Thank them. Um, thank PD for everything they do. And I'm good. All right, thank you. And uh, my comments, I received this in the mail. It's from the census. It took me about 15 minutes to go through the, uh, the census online, but I'm slow, could take you less time, you know. But they ask questions like, uh, you know, do you live in your house, uh, you rent, you own, things like that. So basic information that's going to be important for the city down the road, we need to know exactly how many people live in Lamore for per capita reasons. So need to, that's the, supposed to be starting officially next month for the real press. I think April the 1st, but I got mine in the mail. Uh, the other item was a teaser from last month. The Remember I said there would be something down the road about the uh, public transit, Kings Area Rural Transit? Well, it seems like the last week of the month is going to be free public transit for the whole week. So if you go to the, uh, if you go to any bus stop, let me call this up. There's a, there's a sign in the bus stops on the regular routes that say free traf, uh, free rides uh, the week of the 23rd through the 28th. And they are anticipating a, a loss in revenue based on free ridership, but they want people to have the opportunity to find out what a, what a ride on the bus is like. So um, it's going to be absorbed by cart. But I think a lot of the cost is going to be absorbed by cart uh, because the cart's still going to have to pay for the buses going around in circles, but they're not going to be having a lot of riders on them because people aren't going to school anymore. Huh. So they're losing, they're losing people getting on the bus and they're going to have to absorb the cost. So, um, I'm not exactly, since I sit on the card board, I'm going to find out about that next week. And uh, if they hold a meeting, because they are closing a lot of them. And uh, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to impact uh, CART down the road, but the longer the crisis uh, or the uh, state of emergency is in effect, the, uh, the longer it's going to impact. So... They do sanitize the buses as much as they can. The drivers do it on their brakes and uh, or when they can. So it's hopefully going to be a safe environment for the people that ride the bus. Unfortunately, with schools out, the kids aren't riding their, that bus to school, so that impacts. Uh, as far as other things, I uh, do want to thank the refuse and the rest of the city employees for the things they do, the coronavirus uh, going around is not going to make things any easier for anybody, but we have to work together and make this happen. So that's all I have. And uh, well, hold on, Mr. Plurk. Ma yeah. Mayor Pro Tem, oh. um, CART just recently put out on their Facebook that they canceled the free ride week. So yeah. probably due to the coronavirus, I'm sure they'll bring it back around, but hot off, hot, hot off the social media, CART's. <laughs> The, the clerk happened to point that out to me. So, but thank you for that update. <laughs> <laughs> that teaser at the last meeting just went, oh, by the, 
by the way, what I said about the uh, about the free rides, never mind. <laughs> oh, hold on, Mr. Flirt, one last thing. Okay. Uh, the fire chief came in late. I don't know if he had something that he wanted to say. I know he's been showing up. Thank you, Council Member Lyons. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I really don't have anything to say oh. other than the the coronavirus. It's like you guys said, we every day we're getting updates and different directions to go. Right now, we uh, the fire department, we are responding. They've started dispatching us as flu-like symptoms. That kind of triggers it for us, whether we wear our gloves, our goggles, and that kind of stuff. And uh, working with Kings County Public Health, uh, Kings County Fire, Hanford, Hanford City Fire, but it, it, it's, uh, it's just changing over and over and over, or all the time, I should say. Otherwise, we're still out there. We're still gonna do what we gotta do. Um, we might, I don't wanna say we'll be a little slow, but we're going to err on the side of uh, caution for ourselves. If we get sick, we're really, city's really screwed. <laughs> Lack of a better way to say it. So that's, that's the direction we're going. Okay. And that's it. I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, you know, your your first responders, the police department, fire department, emergency services, whoever gets there first is taking a risk. Yes. And uh, so, uh, yeah, they can't say you. thank you enough yeah. for what you guys do. But we've, uh, and maybe you guys have already heard this, Stuart or uh, Chris might have shared it with you. I don't, or excuse me, Council Member Scaldi and Lyons. How's that? I know. Uh, I know you guys want to go home. I'm sorry, but we do a, we're calling it a doorway evaluation. We stand in the door with our stuff on and we evaluate and we take it that way. Uh, we're only taking one person in with the EMS people. If they kind of basically give us a wave that they need more help, we go, we send another person in or another person in, but we're trying to limit our exposure as much as we can. And that is coming from the guidelines from Kings County Public Health and Hanford City Fire and Kings County Fire. So, any questions? Comments? Okay. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, sweet. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. And uh, that concludes our city council meeting for today. Our next meeting will be on. Let's see. April seventh at seven thirty. Regular meeting. Adjourn. <laughs>